Hi, my name is Steve Maruzzi. We're here at the Training Center. We're going to talk about the Neotherm uh, or Brute Boilers Commercial from 285 up to 850 and how to resolve the 63 hold code. Please remember anytime you're servicing or repairing a piece of equipment, you must shut off gas and electric prior to making those repairs. So let's talk about the 63 hold code. Right here we're showing the touchscreen display again on the commercial sizes from 285 up to 850. So from the home screen, you can see our solar control is in yellow. If we tap on the solar control, it brings us to the main screen and showing us that we have a demand of central heat. So we have a call for heat. But down here on the history bar, it's showing the hold 63 LCI is off. And in parentheses, it says rollout switch. Uh, I want to mention to you on this product, we do not have a rollout switch. This is programmed in from Honeywell. However, the 63 hold code is something in the safety chain. So do not let that rollout switch confuse you. Keep in mind that in that safety chain is the high and low gas pressure switches if it's CSD1 boilers. Um, low gas pressure switch will be tripped leaving the factory because there is no gas to the boiler. So the very first thing you're going to have to do is reset the gas pressure switch. If you continue to then have the 63 hold code, then we'll go through the safety chain which I'll explain in a minute. I'm going to remove the lower panel. In this boiler, the low gas pressure switch, this is a Neotherm 500, is right here. Okay. Very simply, reset the switch and see if your 63 hold code went away. I'm going to remove my upper bezel and I'm going to rest this down on the top of the boiler. I'm going to repower the boiler back up now. I'm going to get my voltmeter ready and we're going to check our safety chain. So now that we've got our voltmeter ready and we've powered up the boiler, just double check your display just to make sure that we're back uh, to that home screen showing the central heat call. Otherwise it's going to be synchronizing which could take 30 to 40 seconds. So we're back to the home screen. I'm going to rest this down and we're going to talk about our safety chain. This is a safety chain that power comes in on a gray wire with a red stripe. It comes down through the flow switch. So if you have a flow switch installed, you would remove this jumper and install your flow switch. Um, and all this is a series circuit. Okay, We have jumpers in here, uh, but as you need in the field to add different safety devices, you would remove the jumpers and install them. Um, from there, so it comes down through the flow switch, then to the optional high limit. Some states require additional high limits installed in the piping. And in this case, we have a uh, safeguard low water cutoff, uh, which is tied in, and then the safety chain goes off to the gas, high and low gas pressure switches, uh, fusible links, and condensate switch. So the very first thing we're going to do is we're going to take the voltmeter, we're going to come up here to TB3 and TB4, okay? The red wires and blue wires are TB3, TB4 are the yellow wires. And what that is, that's our 24 volt power. So I'm going to put one meter lead on TB4, one meter lead on TB3, and you can see we have roughly 25 to 26 volts. By keeping one meter lead on my 24 volt common, I'm now going to come down to my safety chain right here. I should read 25 to 26 volts. If I then go to the next terminal over, if I was to lose that, that would be my flow switch. So my flow switch, if you have one installed, maybe the paddle is broken, or maybe during the installation they forgot to put the paddle in, or maybe the, the pump is uh, not working. Um, from there over would be the limit, so if we have power here, but we do not here, that would mean our limit's open. And now I'm going to continue down the safety chain. I have power here on the inlet of my low water cutoff, but here I do not. Okay, again it's here and I do not have it here. That means my low water cutoff is tripped. And right here you can see I've actually tripped that for us for this demonstration and you can then reset it. Okay, now that we've reset the low water cutoff, again I've got 24 volts or 25 volts coming in and 25 volts leaving. From here it's going to go off to my gas pressure switches my fusible links, and my condensate switch. So keep in mind, uh, example, if your gas pressure switch is tripped, obviously it tripped for a reason. It doesn't mean that that safety device is failed. Um, 
you need to then check your inlet gas pressure to confirm your gas pressure. Also, if you have something here on the TB8 safety chain, you can jump this out to see if your 63 hold goes away, but never leave a switch jumped out. It is a safety device. That's just to identify the problem and then correct your problem. All right, so we're out on the factory floor. Um, this is a boiler being built. This is the Neotherm 750. So earlier when we were in the training room, I showed you a 500 Neotherm, which had the high and low gas pressure switches down low. On the 600,000, 750, and 850, they're mounted up top uh, with the different valves. Um, this is your low gas pressure switch, so gas comes in on the left-hand side. Here's your low, here's your high. To gain access to these, keep in mind, the front cabinet, here's our electrical panel. So you have to remove the top panels to reset these switches. Also, it's very important to remember that when, after we test fire these at the factory, uh, we remove gas. What happens? The low gas pressure switch trips. So on that home screen, it's going to show you 63 hold, and it may show in parentheses rollout switch. Don't be confused by that, okay? Uh, you will have to reset the low gas pressure switch. So when we leave that main panel, it goes off to the gas pressure switch. Then it goes to a fusible disc here, fusible link on the front face panel, uh, two gray wires. And you'll have one on the back of the heat exchanger as well. And from there, it'll also go to the condensate switch. And so we have the two wires for the condensate. So again, these connect to the rear fuse link and then we'll connect to the condensate switch and then this gray with a white stripe goes back to our control panel so keep in mind that's just a series circuit so once we leave the tb8 safety chain we're going to go through the high and low gas pressure switches fuse link and the condensate switch so i try and identify those obviously reset your switches here uh, from there i would go to the condensate switch check your condensate make sure your neutralizers aren't backed up or you have a blockage in your condensate line so for your condensate switch, you can disconnect your condensate wires uh, and bypass it just to make sure your 63 hold code goes away. Um, and if it does, don't leave it bypassed. Obviously, pull your condensate trap, make sure everything's clean and the plunger's not hung up inside or your condensate line uh, is clear. So on the 600,000, 750, and 850, the high and low gas pressure switches are right here under this panel. This is your high gas pressure switch over here with a reset. Your low gas pressure switch is right here. You're going to have to reach around the front, find the rubber knob, and reset it there. If you have any technical questions, please refer to the manuals or contact product support at 1-800-900-9276. Thank you.